All right, I will show you guys how to use the definition of Laplace transform to find the Laplace transform of the function sine of bt. And this is the harder way to do it, but this is the legitimate way to do it, right? You should watch my next video. I'll show you guys another way to find the Laplace transform of sine of bt. But anyways, we'll use the definition right here, which is going to be integral from 0 to infinity, and then we will have e to the negative as t times that, right? Times sine bt, and then dt like that. You know this is hard because we have to use integration by parts. And this is going to be the repeating situation. Anyways, let me first write this down as the limit as n goes to infinity. And then this is integral from 0 to n. And we will have this, which is e to the negative st times sine of bt. And as a reminder, remember that b is just a number. You can think about b as like 6 if you would like. All right, now uh, we have to use the integration by parts. And of course, I'll show you guys with the di method, right? So let me put it down right here. Hopefully, we have enough space, all right? So I'll write down the d and then the i. And then let's put down some plus minus on the side, OK? We have e to the something and sine to the, of something. Which one's easy to integrate? They are both pretty easy to integrate. In fact, it doesn't matter. And if you would like to know this method in detail, watch the video in the description, right? But anyways, I'm just going to be integrating sine bt. I'll be differentiating e to the negative st. Let's do this first, right? So I differentiate this once, I get e to the negative st. And then in the front, I have to have negative s. Do it again. I will keep this. Remember, it's respect to t. s is a constant. So I don't have to use the product rule. That's good. Anyways, e to the negative st. And then I will have to multiply this by negative s. Negative s times negative s becomes positive s squared, like that. And now let's integrate this right here. So the integral of sine is negative cosine. So let me put down negative cosine right here, like this. And the input stays the same, right, bt. But remember, we have to divide it by the derivative inside. The derivative of bt is just b. So we have to do 1 over b right here, right? And now let's integrate this again. This is a negative, right? And then you have the cosine. Uh, the integral of cosine is plus the sine. But we have this negative right here, so let's maintain that. And then this becomes sine. And the input stays. And I will have to divide it by the b again, so it will become 1 over b squared altogether. As you can see, for the function part, this and that repeats, right? This and that repeats from the original, so we can stop right here. And you know we care about this, and we care about that. And for this situation, let me write down what we are trying to do right here again in blue. So. Remember, this is what we want, right? And I'm not going to put on the 0 to n at the moment. I would just like to show you integral of this, which is e to the negative st times sine bt dt is equal to, remember, when you do the diagonals, the product of the diagonals is the part of the answers already, right? First part of the answer is this times that. And let me write it down as positive times negative, so we have negative, and we have e to the negative st times that, so let me put that on the top, e to the negative st over b, and then we have the cosine, right, cosine bt, like this, that's the first part. And then for the second part of the answer, do this carefully, negative times negative is positive, times another negative is negative. So once again, we are going to subtract. And we have s times this times all that. So I will just put this down as s e to the negative st over b squared and then this, right? So over b squared sine of bt, like that. <laughs> all right, so what are we missing? Remember, each product of a row right here, last one, this product right here for this row is still an integral. So check it out. 
positive times negative. This is going to be a negative integral, so we have negative right here. And as I said, we have the integral, and I will just multiply them together. So let me write it down as s squared over b squared, like this first, all right? s squared over b squared. s squared over b squared. And then let me put this and that together. e to the negative st times sine of bt. So let me put it down. e to the negative st sine bt. bt, like that. Okay, you see that this and that are pretty much the like terms. Remember, this is just a constant. s squared over b squared is just a constant. Anyways, what we're trying to do is, I will just add this on the both sides. So we add the integral s squared over b squared, and then we have e to the negative st sine bt, bt, so that this and that will cancel out. I will be doing the same thing right here. We will be adding this with that, which is, um, once again, this is the constant. Let me put this out. We add s squared over b squared, and then the integral e to the negative st sine of bt, bt, like this, all right? So I just add this on both sides. Okay, so check this out. This is technically a 1 in front of this integral, and this right here, we have to add it with s squared over b squared, right? And let me do this real quick with you guys. Let's do 1 plus s squared over b squared. Well, I need to get my common denominator, right? So right here, I will have to do b squared times b squared. So in other words, when I add this up together, we will have b squared on the bottom, so let me put it down. And on the top, we will have b squared plus s squared. So let me put this down, b squared plus s squared. And then we still have this integral, the integral e to the negative st times sine bt dt. And we have all this right here. So let me write it down. This is equal to negative e to the negative st over b, and then this is cosine bt minus s e to the negative st over b squared sine bt. Okay? Well, I need to figure out what this integral is. That means I don't want this, right? Easy. I can just multiply both sides by its reciprocal. So finally, let me just write this down in red for you guys. The integral of this, e to the negative st sine bt dt, it is equal to, I will multiply by the reciprocal right here, and let me put it down as, uh, I'll put this down in blue so it will stand out better. b squared over b squared plus s squared, right? And we have all that, so I'll put on parentheses and all that. So negative e to the negative st over b, and we have that. So cosine bt, and we also have this negative s e to the negative st over b squared, and then this is sine bt. Okay, so this right here will give us that. Okay, this is the answer to that integral. Okay, okay, I'm going to give you guys some more time to look over it. And I'll erase it. So, I'll erase all this right here. And now, I have to use this result. Put it here, right? So let's see what we have right here. This is still going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. I have to integrate this, and we did that, which is this, right? And let me just distribute the result right here for you guys, okay? So be careful with this. b squared over b. So we just have b right here. So let me put it down. We have b right here, okay? b squared over b. It's b on the top. And then over b squared plus s squared, all right? And this is negative, so I should put on negative right here, okay? And we have e to this times that. 
So let me put down e to the negative s t cosine of b t on the side. This is the first term. Next term, I do this times that. b squared, b squared will cancel each other out. And let me put down negative s on the top. So we have negative s on the top, right? Negative s. And we will write this down on the bottom. b squared plus s squared. And I'll put on this on the side, e to the negative st times sine of bt. Okay? So b squared cancel out, s is on the top, and then this is on the side, and then of course we still have that in the denominator. And of course this is going from 0 to n, so I should put it down like that. And that will be wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to erase this as well. Okay, at the end of the day, things are going to work out nicely. Anyways, plugging n into all the t's, and then plugging 0 into all the t's and hope for the best, right? So we will do that. Let's see, this is going to be the limit as n goes to infinity. Let's plug in all the n into all the t's first. We have this. This is negative b over b squared plus s squared, and then we have e to the negative s times n, and then we multiply by cosine of b n, right? And then this is minus s over b squared plus s squared e to the negative s n, and then sine of b t becomes the n, like that. And this is the first term. And then we subtract, right? This is the subtraction part, plugging 0 into all that. Okay, this is negative b over b squared plus s squared e to the negative s times t, which is 0 right here. And then we have cosine of s times 0 of b. This is not s, it's b. b times 0, and then minus s, and then over b squared plus s squared e to the negative s times 0 for the t. And then times sine of b times 0, like that. And let me see, I need to have this parenthesis right here. And technically, altogether, I have to have a big parenthesis for the whole limit. <sighs> Anyways, this part is easy and nice, hopefully. Let's set out the condition, just like the previous examples. So, we want all this to be 0, right? So let's focus on this term first, maybe. We want this part to be 0. What do we need? Here we have cosine of bn, and remember n goes to infinity. Technically, cosine of whatever, you know, it doesn't really have a limit, right? The limit doesn't exist. You have to remember, the biggest that this can get is just positive 1. Anyways, once again, I just have to make sure if I can legitimately bring down the e to the whatever this is, down to the denominator, then the whole thing will be 0. n is infinity. This is negative right here. So once again, I just need s to be positive. Negative times positive times infinity, we will end up with negative infinity. So that's a condition. Likewise, same exact argument. If you want this term to be 0, this is, well, the most you can get is 1. Well, it doesn't really matter then. I just need to bring this term down to the denominator. That means I just want to make sure we need s to be greater than 0. So it's actually the same condition, right? So that s times n and then the negative n, all that will work out nicely. Anyways, I will attach these conditions at the end, but we know the first parentheses will be just 0. And let's see, minus, what's this? b times 0 is 0, cosine of 0 is 1. This right here, 0 times s is 0, negative 0 is 0, e to the 0 is 1. All in all, this is just 1. So we have negative b over b squared plus s squared, okay? What's this? Well, guess what? 0 times b is 0, sine of 0 is 0. So the whole thing here, this is equal to 0, right? So that's nice. 
So we just have this and then minus zero if you would like to just show work like this. You don't need to because at the end, you know, this is just going to be negative times negative is positive b over b squared plus s squared. Okay? Traditionally, the way we write it down is we put on s first. So it's b over s squared plus b squared. Okay? And in order for this to be true, we must have to have the condition s is greater than zero. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is how the sign of bt looks like in the s world. b over s squared plus b squared. And be sure s is positive. That's it.